I remember a joke from one of the open mic session I went. She was talking about her work as a stand-up comedian. She goes, I do stand-up comedy for a living. I don't make a lot of money doing it, but I really like it. That's why I do it. It's important to do what you love. If you don't do what you love, you will become bitter. So every time I see somebody trying to get into a fight at the bar, I just go, Hey dude, just publish those short stories you wrote. This joke would have been funnier if it doesn't hurt inside. I'm in LA for two months now. I'm completely done with school. No more deadlines, no more homework, no more tests. And I still have the same full-time job as before. It's called collecting money for my mom. Before my student visa expires next August, I can do whatever I want in the States. And what did I choose to do? I spent most of my time in my room doing absolutely nothing. I couldn't understand why I was feeling this way. I just spent the past four years of my life studying filmmaking. And now I'm at the place where all the movies are made. When I was looking for answers, I stumbled upon this book called Sickness Unto Death by Soren Kierkegaard. In the book, he explains that human is the synthesis of the opposites. On one side, it's the finite, the temporal, and the necessity. The other side is the infinite, the eternal, and the possibility. Sway too far either way will cause despair, and the sickness unto death is despair. The despair here doesn't necessarily mean depression or any mental illness like that. And most people are in despair whether they know it or not, just part of being a human. I have had a little bit of taste of Hollywood during the past two months. And I'm going to explain my interpretation of sickness unto death with my experience in LA film industry so far. To despair in the finite, the temporal, and the necessity is to lock yourself into one possibility. Safely secure yourself with a crowd. Synchronize your thoughts and actions with everybody else and make no attempt to explore your true self. By seeing the multitude of people around it, by being bruised with all sorts of worldly affairs, by being wise to the ways of the world, such a person forgets himself. In a divine sense, forget his own name. Finds it much easier and safer to be like others. To become a copy, a number, along with a crowd. Now, I don't think Kierkegaard here is accusing anybody who choose to live a repetitive and simple life as being a sheep because he is a philosopher, not a social commentator. He understands that things happen in people's lives that is beyond their control. LA is never short on stories of ambitious young men and women who comes here with hopes and dreams but ended up becoming too busy with putting food on the table and make rent to do anything else. Over time, they were grown to like this routine instead of feeling stuck in it, forgetting the ambitions they once had and forever stuck in finitude's despair. This is why I avoid 9-to-5 jobs like a plague, because I'm concerned about the danger a routine might bring, but at the same time I still crave the stability, and I'm not the only one feeling this way. It's like, in school I was, some, I was working towards something, I was working towards the uh, the diploma that the parents desired and I was part of me was working towards like joining the military and like yeah but then once once I got out of school then it's like now now what now, it's like the entire decision process is all on me yeah and so then all of a sudden I was just like well shit what's the what do I want it's these last six months of just not having a job mm -hmm. and just being like what's the point of everything I'm doing right now yeah and it was difficult yeah but and I'm not saying I found the answer because I definitely haven't but you know having a job is definitely like having a job yeah so it I, gives you it gives you yeah purpose because it's like hey you know you should do this and you should do this but it's like am I incapable of not finding my finding meaning unless I'm doing a job you know what I mean Anxiety may be compared with dizziness. He whose eye happened to look down into the abyss becomes dizzy. But what is the reason for this? It is just as much in his own eyes as in the abyss. Anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. First thing I did when I moved to LA was to speak to the camera union. I wanted to be a set photographer because that's the only thing I know how to do. I had a meeting with them and they told me to join. I need at least 100 days working on non-union sets and 30 days working on union sets as a set photographer to be eligible for the membership. I was obviously not qualified, but at least now I know what to do. I started looking on Facebook groups. A couple of weeks later, I found a set photography gig on there. It was a senior thesis film for a group of American Film Institute students. Action. I showed up on set, worked my first day as a set photographer, and I couldn't believe jobs like this exist. 
Because I was a cinematographer, it was a one-man department. I didn't have to answer to anyone. I had total creative freedom. Because it was a film set, everything was perfectly lit. The lights were so soft on people's faces, and the backgrounds were interesting to look at. I don't get this kind of conditions every day shooting photos. This can get very addicting. I got to meet a lot of people on set, people just like me, young, coming to LA to join the film industry. It was easy and fun the first day, easy and fun the second day, and then the third day, fourth day, and then, and then it's just easy. Things became repetitive. Even if I managed to join the union, pursue this as a career, then what? I picture myself working from set to set. Instead of busy working eight hours a day at a nine to five job, I will be busy working twelve hours a day on a film set. I will make good money, and I will be in a crowd. I will be comfortable. I will be safe. I thought about moving. If I don't work in the film industry at all, I don't have to stay in LA. I have a year in the States. I can do anything. I can go anywhere. I can be anyone. There's infinite possibilities. To despair in the infinite, the eternal in the possibility, is to acknowledge that there is a unique self underneath the physical existence, and then goes overboard with this awakening, rejects all relation to the society at large, constantly experimenting with the different possibilities in life, different locations, different careers, different partners, different interests, and even different forms of oneself. This person will be the king of his castle without realizing that the castle is empty and he rules over nothing. Tan's possibility seems greater and greater to the self. More and more becomes possible because nothing becomes actual. In the end, it seems though everything were possible, but that is the very moment that the self is swallowed up in the abyss. Even a small possibility needs some time to become actual. After the AFI gig, I didn't put in any real effort into looking for another job in film. I spent all day searching for the next place I would move to. Remembering the smell of the airport, the feeling of holding my passport and a one-way ticket in my hand. Daydreaming about all the new experiences that awaits me, and the different lives I would have lived, wherever I land. A couple of weeks later, I got a text from a friend. I met her from a TV show we both worked on back in Santa Cruz. We can do it. She just finished the script for a short film and was preparing to shoot it over the weekend. It's a simple story about a girl going into an interview and ends up having an interesting conversation with a kind of weird boss. Only six people were working on this film. Everybody were either her friends or a friend of her friend. What? You don't know. He's so nonchalant. And you like, like, can't believe me saying this. You're like, you have it all. Like, um, the company, I, the company had no future. And it takes a lot of time and commitment to make this weekend of shooting happen. And this is what this profession demands. From choosing to only write about one profound experience out of the infinite others that happened to her. To committing to these specific shooting days out of all the other days of the year, hard choices constantly had to be made. It takes months just for these 10 minutes of story. But I guess nothing beats the joy of seeing your ideas become a story, your story become a script, and your script becomes a film. Even a small possibility needs some time to become actual. From the preface, Kierkegaard summarized that the only way to combat the sickness unto death is to accept the enormous responsibility of walking the path to selfhood alone. To risk unreservedly being oneself, an individual human being. This specific individual human being, alone before God, alone in this enormous exertion and this enormous accountability. This is not easy because the thought of being alone can be too much to bear. Deep within every human being, there still lives the anxiety over the possibility of being alone in this world, forgotten by God, overlooked among the millions and millions in this enormous household. It's far easier to hide ourselves in the finite and distract ourselves with the infinite. Emasculate ourselves in order to become at least something. The stories that I made up about film ministry about LA are scenarios that would never happen because they are based on things I know nothing about. I made LA out to be this dream crusher because I'm afraid that my name will be lost in the sea of names in LA. These stories are products of my ego and projections of my own despair. When in fact there's nothing wrong with LA, 
and it's a privilege just to be here. I didn't find the solutions to my problems in Kilkagar's work, but he did point to me what's wrong. The bitterness that I was feeling was despair, and it warps everything beautiful. This is the street, I believe. I'm going to a dinner party here. It's hosted by this guy I met at the AFI shoot. He's from Philadelphia, came to LA about six months ago, after quitting his job. I don't know anybody else here besides the host. I talked to this girl who is also a set photographer, moved to LA about a year ago. And this guy who is from LA, I just came back from working on Aquaman in Montreal. And a musician from New Jersey, came here to attend music school. What are the odds that if I go out some crazy lunatic will strike me down? The lady luck prefers those without their fortunes follow me to the ground. I hope like this there's no We came from different places. I'd be sure to stay far away with stories that only we would know. Too soon to bold. Tonight, we are here, sharing this bottle of wine. And tomorrow, we will journey forward towards selfhood, alone.